Gentlemen, on behalf of Major General John F. Campbell, Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault, and the soldiers of the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade, welcome to our change of command. This morning, Colonel William K. Gaylor relinquishes command of the Destiny Brigade to Colonel Paul Bontrager. At this time, we would like to extend a sincere welcome to our distinguished guest, Mr. Ben Kimbrough, Civilian Aid Emeritus to the Secretary of the Army for Tennessee, Mrs. T.C. Freeman, Civilian Aide to the Secretary of the Army for Kentucky Central and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell, and Colonel Bob Freeman, United States Army Retired and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. Yay! Mrs. Petrosky, wife of Lieutenant General Daniel Petrosky, U.S. Army Retired. Major General John F. Campbell, Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault in Fort Campbell, and Mrs. Campbell. Command Sergeant Major Scott C. Schroeder, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault and Post Sergeant Major and Mrs. Schroeder. Brigadier General Warren E. Phipps, Deputy Commanding General for Support, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. Brigadier General Steve Townsend, Deputy Commanding General for Operations, 101st Airborne Division Air Assault and Mrs. Townsend. Brigadier General Jeffrey N. Colt, Deputy Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault and Nancy Cole. Brigadier General William H. Forrester, United States Army Retired. Brigadier General Ricky L. Wright, United States Army Retired. Mr. Phil Harpell, 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. And Colonel Ted the Wild Turkey Crozier, United States Army Retired and 2010 Champion of Fort Campbell. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by Chaplain Vincent Luttrell, the Brigade Chaplain. Please pray with me. Almighty God, thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you for the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade and how you have been with them throughout all their many battles in which they repeatedly and successfully destroy evil in this world, bringing freedom and peace to those who cannot defend themselves. It is you who raise up leaders, and I am grateful that when you looked for a leader, Colonel Gaylor was there to say, Here am I, send me. He led this great brigade into battle, and because of you, returned victorious. He has led with honor and integrity and faithfully served those soldiers standing here today. Continue to bless Colonel Gaylor, Shell, and their daughters as they move on to other endeavors. Thank you for bringing Colonel Bontrager and his wife, Kelly, and their children into the wings of Destiny family. I pray that you give him wisdom to lead this great brigade. Strengthen his hand for the battle to come as he trains up and then leads the wings of destiny into another rendezvous with destiny. I ask this in your mighty name. Amen. And there is all. Please be seated. In a moment, you will hear the 29th Infantry Division Band sound attention. This is the call of alarm at which time troops turn out under arms and it officially begins the ceremony. In a moment, the band will sound adjutant's call, which indicates that the adjutant is about to form the brigade.
taking their positions on the field is the commander of troops for today's ceremony and the brigade staff. The commander of troops is Major Andrew Byron, the executive officer of the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade. Now approaching from the left is our reviewing party, consisting of Colonel Gaylor, the outgoing commander, and Colonel Bontre, the incoming commander. Command is present. Here's all. Accompanied by the commander of troops and the incoming commander, Colonel Gaylor will make one final inspection of the brigade to ensure that the unit is in good order and discipline before relinquishing command to Colonel Bontre.
Officers and colors are present. Set command. Please be seated. The change of command is a simple yet traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. Key to the ceremony is the passing of the colors. They represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers. The unit colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there are also the colors. The custodian of the colors is Command Sergeant Major Bahar, the senior enlisted and principal advisor to the commander. The passing of the color symbolizes the transfer of command, responsibility, and authority from the old commander to the new, demonstrating to the soldiers of the unit that Colonel Gaylord has passed the mantle of leadership to Colonel Bontrager, and with this passes the loyalty of the soldiers. By authority of paragraph 2-3 Alpha, Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade, effective 24 June 2011. Signed, Paul Von Traeger, Colonel, Aviation Commanding. Conduct, 
and military expertise that go with the responsibility of wearing the flag that represents so much of his fellow soldiers. The color bearer for today's ceremony is Sergeant Parker. At this time, Sergeant Norton, the NCO of the quarter for the 5th Battalion, 101st Aviation Regiment, will present a bouquet of red roses to Colonel Gaylor's wife, Michelle, from the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the brigade for her dedicated service as the First Lady of the Destiny family. Also, single red roses will be given to his daughters, Katie, Maggie, and Samantha. of the quarter for the 1st Battalion, 101st Aviation Regiment, will present a bouquet of yellow roses to Colonel Von Traeger's wife, Kelly, from the officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the brigade, welcoming her into the Destiny family. Also, a single yellow rose will be given to his mom, his mother-in-law, and his daughter, Katie. gentlemen, the Commanding General of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assaults and Fort Campbell, Major General John F. Campbell. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and let me send a screaming eagle welcome to all of you. First off, for the soldiers out on the field, go to at ease. All right, shake your legs out, no talking, but stay at it easier for the remainder until I give another command. The voice already mentioned our distinguished guest by name, so I will not go through all of those. Uh, we do appreciate your continued support of our soldiers and families, and especially today, the Wings of Destiny Brigade. Thank you all for coming. I do want to mention a couple, though. Uh, first off, Colonel Retired Tom Denny, the Honorary Colonel of the Regiment, and Command Sergeant Major Retired Joe Moot, the uh, Honorary Command Sergeant Major of the Regiment. Thank you for, for making this a very special occasion to, to accompany this brigade here. Also, like to recognize Michelle, Bill's wife, and the children, Katie, Maggie, and Samantha. Thank you for making this a family affair. It's great to have all of you here together. Uh, also, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Max and Pat Gaylor, uh, Bill's parents, and I think at one time that there was a connection between uh, Max and Tom. I'll let them talk about it later. They were kind of arguing a little bit beforehand, but they worked together here many, many years ago. So thanks, uh, thanks everybody for attending there. For Colonel Paul Bontrager's family, it's great to have his wife Kelly and their children Zach and Katie here as well. And uh, Zach, a year from now, you'll probably be standing out on one of these fields here as a lieutenant. So thanks for what you're going to be able to do uh, for our great nation as well. And thank you for being here to share in this very special day. Also, uh, welcome to extended family members here, Kelly's folks, uh, Colonel Retired Mrs. Gilligan, Brother Phil, Sister Becky, Aunt Dorothy Rhodes, and the nephew Tim Gary. Thank you all again making this a, a family affair. The soldiering is indeed a family affair, and we appreciate the support of our families and uh, that provide us to do what we love to do, and that's the soldier. To the commanders, command sergeants, majors, to all the soldiers and all the family members of the Wings of Destiny Brigade, welcome to today's change of command uh, ceremony, and uh, you honor us here by your presence. Today you have witnessed the change of command ceremony between the outgoing commander, Bill Gaylor, and the new commander, Paul Bontrager. This traditional ceremony symbolizes to the soldiers of the brigade that there's a passage of responsibility and trust to their new commander. And like I said last week at the Rakasan Change of Command Ceremony, that although we are here to honor both commanders, today we also honor all the men and women 
past and present, who have served and continue to serve with the Wings of Destiny Brigade. Their bravery, their courage, their commitment, and with this brigade, their incredible flight skills are unmatched. And their recent deployment to Afghanistan only built upon this great legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for these great soldiers. Colonel Bill Gaylor has led this brigade for the past 26 months. His leadership, vision, and dedication to excellence has been the driving force in training these soldiers before you to excel in their wartime mission. And that encompassed air assaults, air attack, medevac, and sustainment, all of which they did superbly during their most recent rendezvous with Destiny. The members of the Wings of Destiny Brigade were no strangers to the rigors of combat they would face in Afghanistan, and they met their mission head on. As you heard the voice of the Eagle say, Major General William Lee coined our division motto when he noted that the 101st has no history, but it has a rendezvous with destiny. What we don't talk much about is what he went on to say. And he said, let me call your attention. And our badge is the great American Eagle. And this is a fitting emblem for the division that will crush its enemies by falling upon them like a thunderbolt from the skies. And almost 70 years later, the soldiers and leaders of the Wings of Destiny Brigade carried on his vision for during their mission to Afghanistan and made us all proud. As part of the surge of forces and as a main effort in Kandahar, the Destiny Brigade in Afghanistan from February, March time frame of 2010 to March of 2011 flew nearly 100,000 combat hours in support of maneuver forces during more than 15,000 combat aviation missions. And this included reconnaissance and surveillance, medevac, quick reaction force, troops in contact, air movements, and over 800 air assaults. Your air assaults in the places like Argandag, Zari, Panjway were key to the success in the clearance of that terrain. In the winter, your operations were essential to hold terrain and remove the grip the insurgents had on the population. You not only supported our conventional forces, but also flew more than half of your hours supporting special operation forces in their mission to disrupt insurgents in Kandahar, Aruzgan, and Zabul. You flew into insurgent staging areas from Tangi, Mirbad, Baluchi Valleys, and along highways one and four. You put yourselves in harm's way every day to deliver the decisive force and prevent insurgents from reaching their targets. In many cases, destroying insurgents as they attacked your brothers in arms, the Afghan and the coalition forces on the ground. Flying more than 4,100 medevac missions, the daily heroism of the medevac pilots and crews saved the lives of thousands of our wounded. Equally as impressive, Task Force Destiny soldiers conducted refueling and rearming operations at Ford operating bases across the country 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to ensure all supported ground forces retain the flexibility in their operations. The valiant acts of heroism put forth by the wings of Destiny soldiers are evident in some of the awards. 20 Archons with Valor, 20 Air Medals with Valor, Bronze Stars with Valor, and four Distinguished Flying Crosses. Thanks to your heroic efforts, you inspired soldiers and Marines to lean forward into danger and to fight harder, knowing the Wings of Destiny would be there when they called. And your efforts helped to turn the tide of the insurgency in Regional Command South. For Bill and the rest of the Brigade, it was about supporting the ground forces. And on many occasions, on many occasions, every time I talked to Strike Six, Colonel Art Kandarian, he not only talked about strike, but he talked about destiny. And they were the main effort in Regional Command South. And Art sang the praises of the aviation support that he received. He and the rest of strike, as well as many other brigades, knew that when they went into battle, they were never alone. Destiny would get them in, support them while they were on their mission, recover them if they became injured, and to get them out when the mission was complete. That relationship, that confidence knowing that you have the very best flying overhead, well, it's priceless. All of your, all of your successes did not come without sacrifice, and eight Destiny soldiers gave their lives in this deployment. We must always remember and honor the fallen Scream Eagles, our wounded warriors and their families who have sacrificed so much, a sacrifice to make the people of Afghanistan our American citizens and truly the world more secure and safer for future generations. Bill, well done. 
you and your soldiers added a new chapter in the legacy of the Wings of Destiny. Unfortunately for the division and for the Fort Campbell community, you're not going far. I talked about that earlier today. I think everybody here knows I've selected Bill Gaylor to be the next 101st Chief of Staff, and I know that you'll do great. And you'll continue to give back to this community, which you and your family love so much. And we look forward to great things from you and your new job. To Katie, to Maggie, Samantha, thank you for your love and support that you provided to your dad. And Michelle, thank you very much for your continued support. And thanks for what both of you have done and will continue to do for this great, great division. During this past week, all the battalions changed out of this brigade and many of the commanders are still here today and i'd be remiss if i didn't uh, in front of this crowd here uh, say thanks to them and for their service lieutenant colonels taylor haskin klein Ninnis, and ferguson guys thank you very much as you move on to other assignments uh, for our great army let's give them a great big hand here. as 101st combat aviation brigade farewell is one great commander they welcome another into their ranks. And one of the strengths of our great army is our depth, our bench strength. As we change out commanders, we continue to bring in commanders with equally impressive backgrounds that always build upon the legacy of past commanders. And well, today, there's no exception. The Army could not have selected a finer officer with the requisite skill sets to lead this great brigade. And today, we welcome Colonel Paul Bontrager and his family to brigade command in this division. Another critical time in our history and in our nation. A nation that all of us here still know continues to be a nation at war. A proven combat warrior, Paul is no stranger to the 101st, having served as a platoon leader in Deputy S3 and 2nd and 17th Cav, and most recently as a squadron commander in 7th and 17th Cav in the Eagle Thunder Brigade. Afterwards, if you talk to me, I'll tell you a little story about how Paul and his wife linked up when when they were stationed early on at Fort Campbell. So if you need that information, please see me out. <laughs> Future father-in-law happened to be the SJA here. And I'll give you a little more information. Paul, you're lucky to be alive today. <laughs> I know that Paul's wife, Kelly, will provide great support to him and the families of the Wings of Destiny. Paul, you have already lived through the burden of command in time of war. You know it is a distinct honor to lead our great men and women and I know that you'll carry forward the legacy of this great brigade as it writes its next chapter in the brigade's rendezvous with destiny. To the 29th Army Band from Virginia, thank you for making the ceremony truly special. You sound great, and your presence here today during your annual training period is absolutely great timing for us as our band continues to be on block leave. But thank you for taking the time, and again, you sound great and look marvelous. Major Byer, Command Sergeant Mahari, the wings of destiny look magnificent today. Destiny soldiers, we're all very proud of you and what you've accomplished, and we look forward to your continued success under the leadership of Colonel Paul Bontrain. God bless our great nations, our soldiers, our families, Army strong, air salt. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander, Colonel William K. Gaylor. Well, good morning uh, to everyone. It is great to see you all here again today, and thank you for coming out and honoring these great Destiny soldiers. Uh, and I will try to be as brief as possible. Uh, General Campbell, sir, thank you very much for highlighting some of the uh, some of the actions and contributions of this brigade. Uh, they are simply amazing. And I certainly want to take the opportunity to thank you for your leadership and your constant support of this brigade for the past two years. To all our uh, previously mentioned distinguished guests, fellow soldiers, friends of the brigade, welcome. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our Gold Star families and also uh, we're certainly proud to have uh, extended friends, family from both the Gaylers and the Bontragers here to share in this special day. Uh, and you do make that day even more special. I have a couple of quick messages and a uh, few thank yous. First, the soldiers to your front represent the best of our nation. Under those colors, they have fought in combat five times in the Middle East since 2001. And you great Destiny soldiers and all of our Screaming Eagle soldiers serving our nation today are doing God's work far away from home in what will surely be regarded as one of the most challenging times in our nation's history. 
and certainly the longest war our nation has fought, and your generation is now the single largest contributor to this division's great history. No single generation has been engaged in any conflict on our nation's behalf longer than you, and you've heard me say this before, you are now those who came before us to every follow-on generation and whose example others follow, and I could not be more proud of you. Now, if you'll allow me to paraphrase uh, something that our brigade chaplain said at our casing ceremony, and some of you were there and may remember this, when Major Sean McCammon prayed a prayer at that casing ceremony before we went out the door to Afghanistan that said, God, go ahead of us and terrorize our enemy in their dreams. May the relentless visions of failure dishearten and demoralize them, and allow us to be the conduits of your judgment and give us victory. These soldiers took great pride in being the conduits of his judgment, I will assure you, and did it very well. Few units, if any, could have accomplished what you did, Destiny, and some already mentioned of the nearly 100,000 flight hours and 15,000 missions and over 860 air assaults. These data points normally don't mean anything by themselves, but they do today because attached to each one of those flight hours and each one of those combat missions was in support of a troop in contact somewhere in the Argandop River Valley, or an urgent medevac somewhere in Shawalikot, or an air assault to get boots on the ground in the Zabul province, or a QRF insertion or critical resupply for our special operations forces in some isolated area. But you've heard us say many times, the full measure of your efforts is always best captured by those you support, and we supported our nation and our division's finest and strike where my good friend Art Kandarian relayed to me one day after a tough day of fighting in the Argandab, he sent a note that said, thank God for Eagle Aviators who continue to amaze me and all of strike. They are fearless and enable us always. In our business, there is no finer honor than to be trusted by those heroes you support. Your efforts along with an unfortunate amount of blood, a great deal of sweat and shed tears have cemented a relationship and a respect between air and ground that is not duplicated anywhere on the face of this earth. And it was truly something special. But these achievements do not come without a cost. Every life is precious. And over the course of our deployment, we lost some tremendous Americans. These soldiers gave their lives for their country, and they are heroes. For well, they were heroes the day they signed up to serve and said, send me. For they, like Every Screaming Eagle soldier standing here in the formation and all across our great division knew the risk of military service. The day they made the ultimate sacrifice was the day, however, that they became immortal. Where well, they will live forever in the hearts of many and serve as an example for all. And our nation owes them and their families a debt of gratitude that we can never fully repay. They will never be forgotten. Now some quick thank yous to all the soldiers and leaders at every level. These accomplishments are all yours. They always have been and they always will be. And it has been my great honor to be amongst you. <coughs> Job very well done. To Major General Campbell and Command Sergeant Major Schroeder, thanks for the leadership and the superb example. Uh, this command climate is truly the best I've ever seen. Uh, to our other general officers, Brigadier General Townsend, Phipps, and Colt, thank you very much for the guidance, the mentorship, and the leadership, and for the past year for not forgetting about us down south. We really appreciate that. To all of our spouses, family members, FRG leaders, and volunteers, you are truly the strength of our Army and of this great nation. And what you do on a daily basis is phenomenal. And as always, we cannot say thank you enough or compensate you enough for the burden you continue to bear. My girls, Katie, Maggie, and Samantha, we never really get the chance to publicly say thanks to you, and I'll keep it short. Uh, I can never return the time that we've missed together, but I can tell you that your continued support and encouragement are an inspiration to me, and I love each one of you. Michelle, we ask so much of our wives and as volunteers, and we can never say thank you enough. You do it with such a passion for our soldiers and their families. Uh, and, but I do want to publicly thank you. And throughout our careers, all we really have is our reputation and our families. I want to thank you for being there for me now, but more importantly, for being there for me when all that really matters is family. Standing here today, I'm 
incredibly pleased to have turned this brigade over to Paul Bontrager, a tremendous warrior, leader, and good friend. One of our very best in the Army. Paul, I know you will take this unit to the next level, and Michelle and I wish you and Kelly all the absolute best as you take command and lead these great soldiers into the coming years. You will be absolutely terrific. And I look forward to watching uh, what Destiny accomplishes under your leadership. Soldiers of Destiny, this is as succinct as I can put it. It has been the greatest honor of my career to serve with you. And I wish all of you Godspeed in all that you do. And may he continue to bless this brigade, this incredible division, especially our Screaming Eagle soldiers still deployed and in harm's way, and our great nation. Wings of Destiny, bear us all. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 101st Combat Aviation Brigade, Colonel Paul Bontrager. Distinguished guests, friends and family of the Wings of Destiny, thank you for taking the time to be here today, especially those of you who have traveled great distances. Most importantly, a welcome to our Gold Star families and our wounded warriors, both with us here today and throughout Middle America as you continue to shoulder the true burden of our recent wars. General Campbell, thank you for the kind words as well as your trust and confidence. Speaking on behalf of the Von Trekker family, it is wonderful to be back here at Fort Campbell. Mrs. T.C. Freeman summed up our family sentiments on Monday when she met us with that simple yet most wonderful greeting of welcome home. So we do feel blessed and humbled to stand before you today and accept this responsibility. Bill so, Gaylor, never have I taken command of an organization that's more tested, trained, or ready to move forward. You are a phenomenal leader, and you leave a tremendous personal and organizational legacy that we will strive to uphold. Michelle, entire Gator family, thank you for all you've done and continue to do for this brigade. Your, your contributions are immeasurable, and you are truly the, the Army family that we all strive to emulate. Wings of Destiny Brigade, no mercy, out front, eagle assault, shadow, troubleshooter. Your historic and recent accomplishments are heroic and without peer. It is with sincere dedication and commitment that we join together to prepare for this story brigade's next rendezvous with destiny, with a renewed commitment to our primary purpose and our noble cause of complete loyalty and steadfast dedication to our ground forces and their mission. Brothers in the brigade combat team, you can count on us. We will continue to be there wherever you need us. You are why we exist, and we won't let you down. In closing, to paraphrase Generals Eisenhower and Chamberlain, when they were faced with times of great responsibility. Again, the eyes of the world will be upon us, and the hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with us. For I firmly believe, and am so confident in the sincerity of our intentions, that I know we can trust the welfare of our families and of this brigade in the hands of Providence. May God continue to bless the Destiny Brigade and the 101st Airborne Division, Arizona.
Marshalling music, as we know it today, was first used by the Turks and Arabs to terrify their enemies and to assure their troops that all was going well in battle. This presence of the national and unit colors at the center of the formation illustrates their human science influence during the heat of battle.
Dankeschön.
Colonel and Mrs. Bontrager invite you to a reception at Coal Park Commons. Colonel and Mrs. Taylor will remain in the area for those with you to extend farewells. I am Specialist Tom Brady, the voice of the Eagles. Good day and their assault.